Hey guys, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions. Somebody who knows PHP Laravel has been offered a Ruby on Rails job even though they don't know anything about Ruby on Rails, but the employer is willing to pay them while they learn Ruby on Rails. Should he take the job in a dying language? So, people who know my channel know I make Ruby jokes all the time, and we know that Ruby's use case has diminished quite a bit, or when we rephrase that, people who use Ruby has diminished quite a bit. Ruby hit its crescendo maybe around 2007, 2010, something like that. So uh, it is on the decline, but it's not gonna disappear overnight. And in fact, we'll probably see Ruby development for the next five years at least. So the question is, should he take this Ruby job? Well, if you don't have other work and the job is high paying, why not? Because as I try to push in so many of my videos, as I try to explain to people, if a language or framework that does not define you as a programmer, let me state that again, the language you use or the framework you use does not define you as a programmer. You happen to be using those tools at that particular time. So let's say you do take this Ruby and Ruby on Rails job, you do that for one year, two years, three years, what have you, and you see that that job goes away, and what you find are only PHP Laravel jobs, maybe Python Django jobs, uh, maybe some C Sharp .NET jobs, etc. No JS, of course, JavaScript that will be around for sure. Let's say you find yourself in that situation. For you to be able to transition from Ruby on Rails to any of these other web stacks will be trivial for you. It won't be a difficult. Case in point, this job offer. Even though you haven't worked with Ruby before or Rails, they're willing to pay you as you learn because they know you know PHP Laravel. And since you know PHP Laravel, for you to learn Ruby on Rails will be pretty bloody easy. So it makes no difference. So should you take the job? If you don't have a better offer, it pays well, why not take the job? Take the job, make some money, and uh, you're gonna learn because by learning Ruby and Rails, you're gonna become a better programmer overall because you're gonna see how the Ruby people do it and how the Rails community does it, and you'll be able to compare and contrast that to your PHP Laravel experience. And overall, by learning Rails, you're gonna be a better PHP programmer. Or if uh, you're a Ruby person who is pushed into a PHP job or a Node job, doing that type of programming is gonna make you better ultimately with Ruby on Rails. The more languages you learn, the more frameworks that you learn, the better a software developer you will be. Next question. In today's day and age, do you think Java is still relevant as a language for intensive purposes? I mean, Kotlin is rising in the Android community and backend, we have Node.js and other languages and frameworks. The only action for Java is pretty much maintaining existing systems. Well, is that the only action? Let me just jump into it. Yes, Google very recently, and I talked about this in a recent video, is basically endorsing, not basically, they are endorsing Kotlin over Java. Much in the same way Apple pushed Swift, the newer, lighter, faster to develop with language over Objective-C. We now see Google doing that with Kotlin over Java. Kotlin's faster, lighter, easier to code with to build your Android apps versus Java. And there's also probably some business issues with regards to the fact that Oracle owns Java and Oracle is going to start charging, etc. Does that mean that the whole Java Android development environment, that whole space going to collapse overnight? Probably not. It won't. It will probably take a couple of years. Now, if you want a guide in terms of how quickly Kotlin will overtake Java, you could probably look at a recent example, fairly recent, is Swift taking over from Objective-C in iOS land. So you can look at that compare and you probably see a similar behavior with Kotlin over Java, but it will happen. That being said, the hard part about building Android apps is not learning Java or learning Kotlin, it's learning Android development. So whether you do it with Kotlin or whether you do it with Java, it doesn't really make too much of a difference in terms of difficulty of learning. So if you are writing code with Java uh, for your Android apps, 
you'll be able to transition into Kotlin very, very quickly. So, you know, don't worry about that. If I had a choice, though, I would jump into uh, Kotlin for sure. Now, Java will still be around for many, 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 many years, uh, not only because of the old legacy systems that have to be maintained and updated, but also because of uh, IoT devices and other types of programming. That said, I think Java's uh, big growth period is over for sure, and it will slowly, slowly diminish over time, but that's going to be super slow. So as I've said before, and many times, you cannot lose learning any programming language. You cannot lose. Step one, when you're trying to, when you're trying to determine which language to learn, look at the different types of programming that are out there to see which you prefer. You may prefer IoT programming. You may prefer web stack. You may pre prefer uh, machine learning. I don't know. And then what you got to do is also look at the job opportunities where you want to work. You may love c .net, but if you're not in Germany, it may not be popular. I'm just, I think c is popular in Germany, if I recall, but you get the idea. So you have to look at the market forces, not only what you read or hear from vloggers such as me, you have to look at the local market forces, where the job opportunities are, and you also have to uh, consider the type of programming you want to do. Different programmers prefer different types of programming. There you have it. That's it for today's vlog. Bye-bye.